don't know how many times you just show somebody this passage of Scripture and they're anti-government and they, they're rebels is what they are in their hearts and they don't want to surrender to any kind of authority. And those same people won't surrender to church authority. They won't surrender uh, to family authority. They won't surrender to government authority. They don't want to be told what to do. They want to be able to just do whatever they want. And they're anarchists and they're rebels. And what they would say is, well, the government's not good. And you show them a passage of Scripture like this. Here's their response. Well, you know, I mean, Paul. You know, I mean, he just didn't know at that time that they were going to put him to death. I'm telling you, Paul knew that he was going to go to Jerusalem and be bound and taken to Rome when he penned this letter. And that almost certainly meant death. And he said they're ordained of God and they're good. So I would submit to you that you're the one that doesn't know what you're talking about. And that because this is Scripture, God's Word is correct in this matter. And if you want to agree with God and you want God to be pleased with your life, you ought to understand that He ordained government. Okay? All right. Now, God endorsed government. First of all, the government may not be Israel, but God recognized it. And that's verses in, in verse 1. Uh, the, in the second part of the verse, God ordained government at the end of verse 1. Secondly, not only does God endorse government, He gives it His authority. Not only does God say it's good, He actually gives it God-given authority so that literally, when somebody has, uh, when a prophet in Israel, for instance, would have God's authority, what could they do? They could speak and say, thus saith the Lord. They could say, God says. And do you know that those wicked officials in our government have been ordained by God to say, God says? Pastor, I just don't agree with that. The Bible's not the one that's got the problem here. Not only has God endorsed government, He gives us authority. Verse 2, Whosoever therefore resisteth the power, resisteth the ordinance of God, and they shall, that resist shall receive to themselves damnation. God approved government. That's what the verse 2 says. You resist the authority, you resist God. Whereas their authority, the source of the authority for government, is God. And not only that, but the Bible says that there's a consequence for disobedience to the government. Yeah, they'll lock you up. Not talking about a consequence as you stand before God Almighty. You know, you can't be well spiritually and be rebellious toward God's institution government. I'm just telling you a fact. You can't come in, in this place and tell me, well, I disagree with this whole passage of Scripture and, and uh, so on and so forth, and we don't have to obey government. I'm just telling you, you can't be right with God. That's what I'm, t I'm telling you. God's curse is in your life. That's what verse 2 of Romans chapter 12 says. Friend, this gets kind of personal, doesn't it? Doesn't it get personal? Doesn't it mean that if you have a bad attitude toward the cops or the IRS or the... Well, Pastor, don't you know, those, they're, they're wicked. And they do wrong and they're, they're corrupt. Friend, I'm just telling you, God says you resist them and you bring damnation. Along with God's blessing the government, though, He also restricts the ability of the government to abuse. Oh, whew! That's our way out, right? Along with His blessing of the government, God restricts the government's ability to abuse its power. Well, this sounds a little bit better until I tell you what it means. Look at verse 3. For the rulers, for rulers are not a terror to good works, but to evil. Wilt thou then not be afraid of the power? Rulers are not a terror to good works, but to evil. Now, that's a relief, isn't it? And this is, this is practically true in two ways. The first way you'll like, the second way you won't. The first way that this is practically, in a practical way, true for us is that if you do right, you don't have anything to be afraid of, right? If government's good, right? I mean, in a good government. Uh, you know, people that, all this headline, this press that these missionaries that uh, these people from this church that were trying to take kids from Haiti into the Dominican Republic, they don't understand government in Haiti. They really don't. You get to know a little bit about the way things work in Haiti. I'm going to tell you something. This is, not being, this is not me getting into politics or anything else or defending Baptists, breaking the law, anything like that. Uh, what happened in Haiti was that they didn't bribe the officials to get out of the country because that's how things work in Haiti. You don't believe me, you just do a little checking, a little study on it. What happened, the reason those... Uh, Christians got arrested for 
uh, trying to take kids out of Haiti. By the way, they'll fine them, and that's what they want. They'll collect a fine. They'll let them go. That's, you just want to know what will happen. That's what will happen on it. They'll get some money and let them go. That's how the government works in Haiti. Give us money. We'll let you go. Don't give us money. we put you in jail. And those people were too ignorant. They thought, well, we don't have to give bribes to get out of the country. Turns out they did. Uh, that's the way government works in Haiti. And they went to jail. But we, that doesn't happen much in the U.S. And you can say it does, but you just don't see the whole picture. I'm not afraid when I pass a police car. And I'll tell you why I'm usually not afraid. Usually it's because they wouldn't pull me over because I haven't broken any law. Right? If you haven't done wrong, you don't have anything to be afraid of. Now, I could pick on my dad for just a little part. Uh, this time, maybe I will, uh, just for fun. I wish, wish he were here, but he'll probably watch our, uh, service on YouTube, so it'll work anyway. Um, if my dad's driving, riding with me in the car, and I'm driving, and he passes the police officer, he says, Slow down! Use your blinker! Turn the light, whatever. And he's, there's a police officer, and he gets real nervous. I don't know if it's because he breaks the law. I'm not offering any commentary on that at all. But I don't worry about it. I just drive. And if they want to pull me over and I broke the law, I'm willing to accept the consequences, understanding that, hey, I broke the law, and so I deserve a ticket or whatever. I, I just don't get tickets. And maybe that's the reason that uh, I'm not afraid of it. It just doesn't really happen. I mean, if I get a ticket, I'll deserve it. I just know that. So I'm not afraid of it. And you know that usually government appreciates law-abiding citizens. It's true, isn't it? Many times they've seen so much corruption from people and so many people lie to them. It just blows their mind when you say, yes, officer, I was speeding. It's just, okay, so give me an excuse for why you're speeding. I mean, you're on your way to the hospital. There's an emergency. No, I was speeding. I broke the law and I deserve a ticket. And they're just like, Wow. And usually they're just kind of, I had that happen to me one time. The guy just said, okay, all right, well, I just want to tell you and slow down. And I said, yes, sir, thank you, and off on my way, no ticket. Rulers aren't a terror to evil, first of all, because if you've got a clean conscience, you just don't have to worry about it. But I'll tell you why rulers aren't a terror to evil works. It's not because of government treating you nice because you're good. You know why rulers aren't a terror to evil works or to evil? Because even if they're corrupt and they do me wrong, I'm still okay. See, friend, you can do wrong and they can be corrupt, and God will judge you for your attitude toward authority. But they can throw me in prison for preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ the way the Bible says I'm supposed to, and they can be a terror, if you will, toward me, but they cannot terrorize me. Terror means inner fear, this quaking or this sin. And I'm just telling you, the Bible says that a believer is not supposed to fear those which are able to harm this body. But we're supposed to fear him which is able to destroy both the body and soul in hell. And so I'm not afraid what somebody who's corrupt or somebody who's doing wrong can do to me. Man, I'm telling you, they're so crazy, they'll kill you. You cross them, they'll kill you. You don't do what they say, they'll kill you. Well, they can kill me, but they can't harm my soul. And they cannot make it so that God will judge me for my behavior. Friend, I can do right, and there's nothing they can do about it, so I'm not afraid. Well, what if they impose some laws where it becomes illegal to preach the truth? Well, friend, I'll preach the truth and go to jail. They have the right to imprison me. And if they execute me, then they'll execute me. But I'm just telling you, God endorsed them and He gave them their authority and their power and they overstepped the boundaries of their power. It's not for me to worry about because I can stand before a holy God with a clean conscience. And Christian, it's not about the Constitution and your rights. It's about standing before God righteous. And our attitude's all messed up and that's why our leaders are all messed up. It's because of our attitude toward authority. A bunch of rebels that want the authority to be subservient to us. But I'm telling you, God recognizes authority, and you and I ought to as well. Okay, we're going to finish up very shortly here. Law-abiding citizens don't have a reason to fear. You don't have to be afraid if you're doing right, first of all. America, I don't fear the police. I don't fear the IRS because I try to do right. I try to pay my taxes. I try to obey the law. And if I get in trouble with them, at least I'll have a clean conscience. They make an unreasonable law or do something to me, uh, I'll be okay because I can stand before God. Some countries' government abuses authority. We don't have to fear damnation because God doesn't judge us for their misdeeds. I don't answer to God for what they do wrong. I answer to God for my sin. 
That's refreshing to me.